So, hey guys, welcome to the part one of my walkthrough of Dark Souls 3. I promised to cover the game when it came out in the English version on the worldwide release. So, uh, here we are. I did play the, an entire playthrough blind on the Japanese version, which I made a playlist of. It's a short and easy series containing gameplay footage of my journey on the first playthrough through the game but it's all in Japanese so it's uh, quite difficult to comprehend even for me this game contains uh, a lot of nostalgia as uh, you see while playing through it it's got a lot of uh, new stuff put into it as well as uh, a lot of old stuff from previous games both gameplay wise and lore wise this is the first challenge in the game so to say big friggin lizard something else than those uh, glittering treasure lizards in the games you know the small ones will always run away She's been like the food mother or something. And she's mad. I don't have any specific tactics for this one other than uh, watch out for the attacks. And that. It's uh, actually a pretty uh, good training ground for the second boss. I found it quite similar. The dodging and the moveset of the boss. It's a lot of similarity. Which is cool. I feel that they're, they're being very creative with the enemy designs of this game. There's a lot of new stuff, and uh, as well as they use old artwork or enemies that develop them further like the lizard for example and this and the boss fight too are pretty cool some unique looking and some looking like what you'd expect from a Dark Souls game I also heard that uh, this game is running on the same engine as Bloodborne so it makes the game gameplay wise it's kind of faster than uh, Dark Souls 1 and 2 which uh, I found preferable as I in general is a better play in Bloodborne uh, than in Dark Souls 1 and 2 in my opinion so fast paced style suits me better <coughs> just gonna dispatch of these enemies in the starting area just to show you around and I'm gonna move further first area is much of a tutorial area, pretty easy, other than the lizard, which is the only real challenge here. You see there's a lot of graves, kind of gives you the feeling uh, from the undead asylum, where the undead were left to die. Man, some scenery. Our first bonfire. So we press on, we're soon about to do a boss fight, just getting rid of this guy, and if you manage to do this jump, you'll find a Tide Knight shard right here. I picked it up earlier because my recording fucked up, so I died at the boss, first pass. But it doesn't matter, I'll show you guys anyway. So, this is Ludex Gun there. 
I'll let you enjoy the boss fight without commentary in a bit. He's got two phases and he is parable, which I'll try to show in an instance. So yeah, enjoy the first boss. the second phase and that's the first boss you guys did manage to get in a couple of parries. Kinda clumsy though, but uh, at least it showed that it can be done. And yeah, I think the music is uh, pretty cool and epic for a first boss. All in all, cool starting boss. Beats the Asylum Demon <laughs> by far. So we're going to make our way to the hub area, which is Filing Shrine. It's not the exact uh, same place as in the first game, but it's still a Filing Shrine. Just gotta get rid of this friggin... There we go. As for the first boss, I made a video of it on the Japanese version where I did a no damage fight. Taking absolutely no damage or hits. But uh, without any parry, so people were complaining a little about that. I also made a video about this place to the right here. I'm speculating that uh, it was the grave of Knight Artorius from the first game due to uh, a sword similar of his at this grave and uh, Bloody Crow also com commented that uh, that the dog enemy is supposed to to resemble Sif his uh, loyal wolf dog so this is the Firelink Shrine, and uh, one of the NPCs who meets first here is ah, this guy. Another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. Gives me conniptions. And it have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to loot the fire. Not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? <laughs> what a sick asking us to see you talking. <laughs> what a depressing guy. It's like the crestfall night. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. From the first game. I tend to the flame. And tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. So, this is the firekeeper. Sovereignless, I will show Ashen One. So, so in the CGI uh, intro or trailer. 
So here you place the sword you got from Gundir and make the bonfire. I give you a roundabout, a round, show you, show all the characters. It starts here. All that unkindled, and a seeker of lords. I am Ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Sindhu. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child course. This sad cadaver, you need to be calm. Have a closer look. So, Ludlith will uh, be selling you boss weapons further in the game when you get some boss souls up and going. And he's the only Lord of Cinder on the throne. It's five lords in total, so that means you get beat four. Those are four cool bosses. Next, the last two characters are pretty known faces from before. You might recognize this maiden. No, maiden, what the hell? It's not a maiden, it's an old hag. From uh, Dark Souls 2. She sells weapons and uh, armor sets. You can collect ashes from different uh, NPCs and bosses and give them to her and she will sell their equipment. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. That's right. Like some journey, I wager. You require good arms. Let me smith your weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Good old Andre from the first game. So yeah, I want to remove the mana Estus because we're doing a quality quality build. So next up, I'm going to show you how to get a covetous serpent ring and an extra Estus Flask Shard, which all comes in handy so early in the game. Right outside here you can see Tree of a Giant, much similar to the one in Dragon Lake in Dark Souls 2. The place we want to go is a bit tricky, tricky jump, but uh, I'll show you how to make it. There we go. So after you made a jump you want to go past this ramp here and take up these stairs. Now we'll be on the top of the Firelink Shrine. Just watch out so you don't fall over the edges. And these birds are the same birdies that I give you items and equipment in the two for other games as well. There's the Estes Shard. There's a hidden wall, not that one apparently. Uh, these birds uh, trade you item for items, like in uh, Undead Asylum and uh, Things Betwixt. There's our chests, and there's our ring. So the last thing I'm going to show you in this part is how to get the uh, Uchi Katana, which is a very nice katana weapon and a dex weapon at that. The only downside is that that's guarded by a, an a enemy which does a ton of damage. It's the naked samurai, there he is. It can be tricky. 
I did a video on him uh, earlier. How to deal with this guy easy. And uh, the best weapon against him is gravity. So let's try and tilt him off the edge. Here. Just getting a set in our attacks and stagger him until he falls off. And reload your game and you'll be able to pick up his gear and weapon. There we go. Uchi Katana, Master Sataya and Master Gloves. Which is a very good setup for a light build. Just gonna pick up a couple of last items and deal with these guys. So if you if you enjoy Dark Souls 3 or the other games for that matter and uh, the earlier videos I made, so I recommend that you stay tuned for this walkthrough. I think it's gonna be fun. I'll do my best to provide an insight of the game for y'all and uh, to show where to get the items and how to deal with the bosses. So in the next part we'll be going to High Wall Lutrick. I'll see you there. So until then, thanks for watching and uh, stay classy guys.